one thing we don't want Dr. Krasny out. We want him here as long as uh, as long as I love our dance room to be here. And uh, and uh, okay, so okay, so um, it was actually this past Thursday. Just to tell you how this. Uh, what are you? Well, I'm the beautiful deep. Thank you. Uh, I had too much food, so my memory is a little bit uh, all joggled up and all good stuff. But the way this lecture came about was. This past Thursday, we were at Dr. Ghazi and Alianti's house, and um, so Dr. Ghazi would say, oh, well, Brother Essen is in the Netherlands, so he really can't do a lecture this Sunday. So he's like, would you like to do it? I was like, sure, I'll do it. So um, the reason I was able to say, sure, I can do it, is because this uh, talk and lecture has been on my mind for the past four weeks. So uh, what I feel that I'll share with you guys will be impactful in some way or form, maybe a little bit, maybe huge, but uh, I think this will be a great lecture. Okay, so um, before I get started, I want to say that I do this for the love of Allah. I come here for the love of Allah. And um, all, all of uh, Allah's best blessings and peace be from Prophet Adam, Prophet Noah, to Prophet Abraham, to Prophet um, um, Moses, Prophet Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon them all, all their companions. And okay, so let's get started. Um, so, it, as Dr. Kazi has said many times, and as well as Brother Aston, a lot of the commandments that Allah has said, it will either be something you do for Him, a duty that we have to do towards Allah. But usually number two is something very important. Um, because the second most important duty that we all have, can we all can relate to. Um, it is about our parents. Um, because it is our parents who bring us into the world, who care for us for many years, before we decide, you know, I think we're independent enough to go out on our own. And then we realize, you know, how much our parents really did for us. And um, <coughs> so, um, so let's get started. Um, it, Mommy, if you could read the verse of the Rights of parents over children. And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him, and that you be excellent to your parents. If one of them or both of them attain old age in your life, say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at <coughs> them, but address them in terms of honor, and lower your unto them the wing of submission and humility through mercy and say, my Lord, bestow on them your mercy as they did bring me up when I was young. Thank you, um, So uh, if we can, we can um, take the word um, excellent. Um, there's a word that Dr. Ghazi has stamped onto every person's heart in here. Um, if you've been here for a little bit, you may not know the word yet, but for all of us who, I can say if you're here six months or more, uh, the veterans, um, it's the word Islam. Um, and uh, Allah had commands us as the children because we all have parents. Whether your parents are living or dead, to do a son to your parents. And a son has three components. Um, I know one person, my brother knows the, uh, the components of a son. Could you please say the definition of a son? Uh, a son has three parts. Uh, number one, do more than your duty. Number two, take less than your basic right. And number three, do both with a smile. Okay, thank you. And um, the reason that we are commanded to do a son to our parents are because when we are born, um, how many uh, times have our mother woken up in the middle of the night? Countless times, two, three, four, five times. Uh, for me, I think I was a noisy baby, so I know my mom woke up a lot. Um, and so uh, we have that. So they sacrifice a lot of their life that they used to have before the baby, and when the baby comes in, their whole life changes. So uh, I would like to say sorry for taking your life so much, Mom. Um, and then also, uh, the reason is because when our, our when we're growing up, our parents don't disrespect us in any way. We're trying to learn something new. You know, how many of, uh, how many of you guys uh, also learned how to ride a bike? You know, my dad never said, oh, you, you suck, oh, you're a slow learner, oh, you'll never get this. He would always encourage, you know, you get, come on, get it one more time, you got this scratch, no biggie, do it again. So he never would uh, abuse me in any way, so I have no right also to abuse my parents. Um, and also within the same uh, Quranic verse, um, it says, um, and lower onto the wing of submission and humility. Um, one benefit is whenever we are submissive to our parents, uh, we are humble before our parents. Um, there, what is the reward besides having children who do the same? Um, there's a, a fantastic couple, Dr. Tazi Aliante. I love using them as examples um, because it seems every Quranic verse of Hadith that the Prophet has said can relate to them. You see their kids, Yasser, phenomenal guy. Uh, he's a doctor, graduated from uh, Yale, if I'm not mistaken. And then the other son, Ob uh, Obed, he runs, this, he runs the Islamic Center and all that good stuff. 
And um, so because Dr. I know Dr. Kazi, Ali and I know they were humble to their parents, they were submissive to their parents, and so as a result, their kids are the same to them. And as a result, their kids are doing the kids were also humble and submissive to Dr. Kazi, Ali and their kids are also submissive to them. And uh, so if you want a living example, we have the right in this room. That's your chair. That's your chair, I know that. I keep that chair empty for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I guess, okay, Adam, I'm going to pick on you. Yes, if you could read the second bullet point, please. Okay. Abdullah bin Umar saw a Yemeni man performing tawaf while carrying his mother on his back. This man said to Abdullah bin Umar, I'm like a teen coming for her. I have carried her more than she carried me. Do you think I have paid her back? Um, oh, 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 bin Umar, sorry. And that's perfectly. Abdullah bin Umar replied, no, not even one contraction. SubhanAllah, let's take a pause over here real quick. So, for, has anyone uh, been to the Gaba and, and done the circling of the Gaba in the room? A couple of people I know. Um, is that simple to do with the, with the amount of people that we have who go there? No. So now you imagine you carry someone. Uh, I know my mom is light, so I can carry her really easily. But uh, even if I carry her and I still do the seven circle, after a while my feet are going to hurt. My knees would hurt, my thighs would hurt, my body would ache. Um, because it's not a simple, it's not an easy task to do. So if we take a moment and pause at this, uh, this hadith, there's a man who carried his mom, who did the circles of the Kaaba, and he thinks in his mind that I have done my duty to my mom. And this is the utmost. I brought her to the Kaaba, we did the circles, we're good. I mean, we're even now. And, what, and, and the gentleman, Abdullah ibn Amar, he is the son of the, uh, the noble companion, Umar who was one of the Prophet's closest companions. And he tells him, no, what you have done does not even um, equal, uh, equal one contraction that your mom did when uh, it was time for you to give birth. So you just take a moment and you realize how much indebted you are to your parents. That there's really no way that we can ever um, do enough things to say, you know, mom and dad, I think we're even. <laughs> no matter you know, uh, how much you think you do, but in the end you realize I wasn't even close. Um, so since I am on a time limit, I'm going to be, I'm going to skip a little bit of stuff on the on the uh, handout I have for you because I know all of you are intelligent people and you can you can read and figure it out. And um, so I want to take your uh, um, attention to the. Um, so before we before the, the hadith where it says paradise lies underneath your uh, mother's feet. Before that, I want to say something. Um, there was a, 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 a man who came to the Prophet and said, who, oh, who do I uh, respect the most, pretty much, or who owes the greatest claim on, on uh, me in regard to service and kind treatment? And the Prophet said, your mother. So the man asked the exact same question. Uh, who has the greatest claim on me with regard to service and kind treatment? The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked again, the same answer, your mother. The man asked again, the answer just then was your father. Now, uh, if you can take a moment and just pause back and uh, you will zoom out from this. Um, the reason that the prophet said what he said was because um, for the first nine months, our mother carries us. And then after that, for the next two years, our mother means us. And then for, I mean, our fathers are there, but they're at work. They're, they're bringing the physical needs, if you will, the money, the food, the housing, and all that stuff. But it is our mother who is there who provides us the emotional support we have at the, be at the very beginning. Because no matter um, uh, if someone's a good guy or a bad guy, they always love their mothers, right? I mean, there was a movie um, that I saw, and one of the quotes uh, that the actor said was, uh, even bad, even bad, uh, bad uh, boys uh, love their mama. So I know, that, I know that's true for everyone. And, um, and so the, the, those are just some exam reasons why the prophet said what he said was, it's your mother three times first, so you respect her, you give her kind treatment three times more than your father, because our mothers are always tender to us, and they're they're gentle for us, you know, and they, and they cook very good, <laughs> so you know, you're always nicer to them. And um, so, if we can go on to the next hadith, um, it says the famous hadith is that paradise lies under the feet of your mother. So this means that you know you do good for your mother, and it will lead you to paradise. 
Um, there was a um, uh, Abu Huraira, he was a companion of the Prophet. He had said, um, a, uh, a person is, is disgraced if he cannot attain paradise by, by serving his parents. Um, and the reason is because as our parents get older, they can't necessarily do all the things. And maybe they can't, you know, reach for the jar that was that they used to be able to in their uh, younger days. Maybe they can't drive from point A to point B. Maybe they can't read something. You know, maybe they can't lift something. So these are all opportunities for all of us to step in, and and we can do that for them. I mean, when we do, we might not necessarily think, oh, I'm doing this only because I get to paradise. But it is a reward because when we do it, you know, we're doing it because we love our parents. We want to help them. And uh, as a result, we get rewarded for that. Um, and uh, also, okay, one funny thing i like to say is, uh, when I first heard this hadith, I was probably seven years old or so. So you guys want to know what the first thing I did? I went to my mom, I lifted her feet, I was like, where's the golden glove? You know? <laughs> I thought it would be there. <laughs> you know, but no, my mom said, no, that's not what it means. You know, it, this is what it means. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So, you know, if, you're, if you ever seven and had the same thought, I'm with you. You know, we're in this together. So, uh, so and also, um, our, our right to our parent, it doesn't matter if they're Muslim or non-Muslim. Let's say I'm Muslim, and let's just say if my parents are non-Muslim, I would still owe them the rights that, that Allah has commanded me to do because they are my parents still. Uh, so religion, race, none of that stuff matters when it comes to your parents. Um, now, if your parent uh, tells you to do something which is against the commandment of Allah, then you can say, no, I'm not doing that. But otherwise, besides that, you, you do what you have to do, because they are your parents. Um, okay. So a couple things that I like to say, because uh, like I said, I'm on a time limit, I have five minutes, and I did promise Dr. Ghazi I'll be done really quick. Um, is a couple things that, um, that uh, the parents have the right to do is uh, first of all, they have the right to be respected, and they have the right to be obeyed. Because all parents are always wanting the best for their children. You know, how many times have you heard this, you know, I want your life to be better than my life was. I'm doing X, Y, and Z, so you can have A, B, and C. So every parent has the innate nature that I want my kids to be better. Um, I know uh, uh, my dad, he can be sometimes, you know, you know, you know, you gotta do it, but when I come to him, he always like, how can I help you? you know, how can I help you this? How can I help you that? Um, same thing with my mom. She's not all, you can do it. She's like, let me help you. <laughs> so every parent always wants to do, wants the best for you, so we have the right to obey them. Because what they're going to tell us is going to be for our benefit. It's not for them, it's not for a bad thing that can happen to us. Also, every parent has the right to scold and criticize us, if need be. Because like I said, they want to protect us from any physical and moral harm. So, you know, an example is, if, I remember this, I was a kid, and uh, I, maybe I was five years old. I'm still a kid, exactly, to my mom. Uh, I think I was five years old, and my mom was ironing, so she steps out of the room. Well, what did I do? I pulled the plug, right? So the iron comes on my hand, and so my mom, she might have scolded me for a little bit, but she took me to the doctor, of course, you know. Um, but she might have scolded me and said, you know, you should not have done that because it hurt you. So when a parent does that, it's because they want to protect their kids. Um, because, you know, uh, how they say moms can be like mother hens, you know, they're always going to put their wings around you. And, because um, I know that um, when I, I had uh, surgery for some, for something, and um, I know that my mom was always like, you know, she was, she was doing prayers for me, she was doing duas for me. I was like, mom, why are you doing it? You know, it's, it's what happened to me. Let me do it. She said, no, you have no clue. When you're a parent, you'll understand. So. Just that, uh, that, that's the reason, you know, I'm like, Mom, you can criticize me as much as you want, you know. <laughs> because I know Dr. Ghazi once said that, um, I think there was a hadith of the Prophet where he said, um, when a mother just thinks of something for her kids, it is accepted by Allah. Was I correct? Okay. So, so that's why, um, that, that's one thing that I told Mom, and you can quote me as much as you want. Um, <laughs> and so also, parent, the parents have the right to be looked after. Because like I said earlier, um, Parents always care for us for the first two, three, four, five, 18, 20 years, whatever it is. For me, it's 23 years. Um, so they have the, they're looking after us. So in the end, we have the right to look after them. Because when they get older, instead of sending them to like a nursing home kind of thing, it's our duty to say, you know, um, let me look after you. know, you move in with me, mom. She, my mom always makes a joke. She's like, you know, I'm going to buy a house. I'll have your house over here. And I was like, and she was like, I'll have, you know, within window range. It's like, no, mom, we're good. I'll fly to you instead. So, no, but uh, the parents do have the right to be looked after. Um, 
Also, like I said, the parents, they have the right to be helped, regardless if it's financial, physical, et cetera, whatever it is. Uh, because, once again, they helped us. Um, uh, since I was in college. College is not necessarily the cheapest thing in the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, but my parents helped me with that. So that's not, that's not the main reason why you helped them, but that's just an example. They've helped us. And uh, so that's why, alhamdulillah, I can say I don't have any student loans. I have no college debt because of my parents. And um, also, we can... Okay, so if before the end, um, I had this one uh, last bullet point. And um, the reason I include this last one, I, I found this interesting because um, this is not just an Islamic concept, like I said. Regardless of religion, you have the right to, your, to do good to your parents, to treat them with respect, to humble yourself, to serve them. Um, so as you can see, the last bullet point, I have three, there's three prophets that I mentioned. Jesus, uh, uh, Prophet Yahya, Yahya, and Prophet Joseph all said something in regards to... Uh, their parents. Um, Prophet Yahya, or Prophet John the Baptist, he said, be kind towards your parents, be kind towards parents and not tough and disobedient. Prophet Jesus said, God made me kind towards my mother and not, it did not make me tough and disobedient. And we all know the story of Prophet Joseph. Um, he, long story short, he became one of the uh, royal ministers to the uh, 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 Pharaoh in Egypt. And uh, what did he do? He called his poor parents from the far off home and offered them seats on a high platform. So this means that regardless of how high in life you get, maybe uh, your parents are lower middle class, low class, whatever, no matter how high you get, you never forget your parents because they were there for you, so you never forget about them. And so the, the last one, which is, if you will, the takeaway for this, is uh, um, duties that we have towards our parents. And I'm not going to read them like I said, there are plenty of them. And this is just a handful of the uh, duties that we have towards our parents. And um, I just, I know we have, I thought you guys in 20 minutes, it's 19 minutes. Um, so I won't have time for questions because I want to say one last thing. Um, I just want to say before all of y'all <clears throat> that I know my brother will feel the same. Um, sorry about this. Um, as y'all as witnesses, our parents have done enough for us. And, um, on the day of judgment, uh, we hold nothing against our parents. Um, we ask that Allah um, forgive our mom and dad, um, give their account in the right, right hand, take no judgment, and allow them the highest level of paradise. So uh, with that, I'm done. That was a full 20 minutes, so I will not be taking questions. But Dr. Kazi will. He has the next 40 minutes. So uh, I just want to thank you guys so much. And uh, just like, okay.